Hi everybody, welcome back to Homestead, Ohio. Uh, I got a little problem with my blueberries here and it's access to water. We have had very little rain over the last couple months, maybe about three inches in two months, which is not very much. And being a hillside like this, a lot of it tends to run off before it can soak down in the ground. And you can see my little blueberry bush over there is looking very bad. Uh, that's probably the worst one. There's a couple other ones in there that are pretty bad too, but I need to get some water to them. And I bought this a couple months ago and I should have put it in as soon as I got it. But this is one of the solar um, drip irrigation setups from Amazon. Of course, you know, Chinese stuff. It's got these little drippers here that go right down in the ground. Now it says it's for 30 plants or 40 plants. It comes with 50 of these drippers. It comes with a lot of other little stuff here, uh, anchors and stuff for putting it in a wall, a bunch of little small tubing, little pieces like this, um, a bunch of fittings. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes with this. And I'm going to get it set up and I'm going to run one of these drippers to each one of these plants here. You got a larger tube here that is for both your, um, your pickup tube and your distribution tube. And I've got, I bought some extra tubing and a bunch of extra fittings so I could configure it the way I need it. You got your little control panel that comes in here. It's got a couple leads on it. Uh, one is connected to the solar panel. The other is connected to the water level sensor in there. And I dug out a little spot up here on the hillside to set this barrel up here flat. And I'll fill it up with another barrel I've got. Make sure you've got a barrel that uh, was not used with any chemicals or uh, petroleum products or something like that something that is um, food safe uh, I don't remember what was in this one but I got it from somebody that used it for rainwater storage uh, clean them out really well uh, no matter what it had into it and uh, we're going to get it set up I'm going to put my solar panel up here on this post here it's going to get plenty of sunlight during the day now this thing has an internal battery in it pump and everything and it's, uh, it's good for like five days, I think, with no sunlight. So a little bit of sunlight during the day will keep the battery charged in it. And we'll go through all the programming and everything once I get it mounted and everything. Um, but I'm gonna get to running this tubing and everything, get everything mounted. I say everything a lot, don't I? Anyways, I'm gonna get it all set up and then we'll take a look at some of the details on it. I've got everything set up now. I've got all my hoses, all my drippers or emitters. Now this, this package, when you look at it on Amazon, is gonna be kind of confusing and I took a chance and bought it anyways because it's listed as uh, for 30 plants and it comes with 50 of these drippers. Now, if you read through the, um, the comments that people have made, the reviews and stuff, a lot of people have come up with an E3 error code that'll show up on here and a lot of people don't know what that's for. 
And the manual that comes with this thing is absolutely terrible, um, but it's not that hard to figure out. So the E3 code, what that is, is because someone did contact the company and find out is they did not have enough of these drippers or emitters on their system. So you need to have at least 40 of them hooked up. Otherwise it creates a little too much back pressure as far as I can tell from the, the comments and descriptions and everything. So someone had less than 40 on there. And this little pump that's inside here draws water up from here and puts it out to all the plants. There's a little anti-siphon piece here, which is definitely necessary on my setup because when the water comes out the very end, it would drain the whole barrel, however long it takes to go through that little bit of tubing. This actually draws air in so it won't siphon everything out of the barrel. But when you put these little drippers on here, it, it's pretty easy. You go to each plant, wherever you want to put one, and you, you're going to cut the tubing, and then you're going to fit one of these little tiny eighth inch T's in there. Now, that's another problem I ran into is finding eighth inch tubing locally. I could not find any. And my situation is a little bit different because I've got such a big area. Not, not that there's a lot of plants, but it's a bigger area. <clears throat> and stuff is kind of stretched out, so I need a lot of distance between each one of these emitters. But you put one of these on there, stick it in the ground, wherever you're wanting to put the water on there. Now, these don't, they're not hollow. They got little grooves in them. So when you put that tubing all the way on there, cut it nice and straight, the water will kind of trickle down in here and then drips off and goes down closer to the roots where you need it. So you get those all cut, assembled, and then you just move on to your next plant, your next plant, your next plant. The situation I ran into was it did not come with enough tubing of the eighth inch tubing, and it doesn't come with enough of the, uh, I think this is uh, seven millimeter, eight millimeter tubing, the bigger stuff for your, uh, your pickup tube and your distribution. It didn't really come with enough of that. So I, I did purchase another little kit of uh, fittings and I used a bunch of quarter inch tubing. Now, when I do my grapevines, I will probably use quarter inch on almost all of that um, and some of the eighth inch too for each one of the emitters. Um, and it's really, it's a pretty neat setup because I don't have to be here to do anything. Now I do have it set on kind of an aggressive watering schedule right now just to get some moisture in the ground and then it'll be kind of a maintaining it or a maintenance schedule on the water. But there's only two buttons on the front and they're pretty easy to figure out even with the horrible instructions that come with it. So on the underside of this unit, you only got a few connections. You've got an inlet and an outlet. You've got a button underneath here where your two wires come out. Right beside there's a little black button for your power. You got two buttons on the outside. You got the watering time and the interval time. The watering time is how long it's gonna water. You can go from, I think, one minute to 30 minutes, uh, one minute intervals on there. And then the interval time is, um, I think every, Oh, 15 minutes. I mean, there's from, I think it's 15 minutes all the way up to seven days. So you can have it water for one minute every seven days if you want. Um, I, right now, I think I have it set up on, uh, it's going to water for 20 minutes every three hours. Like I said, I'm trying to get a bunch of moisture in the ground there because with the little rainfall that we've had, it's, uh, not doing so well so hopefully i can get some water in there and then just maintain that with the sawdust and the compost and everything i've got around the plants it should hold it in there pretty good and we are going to do a little experiment i've got a beaker here and we're going to set it up to run for 20 minutes uh, and see how much water it actually puts out at the farthest emitter for 20 minutes um, but to, it's really simple you push this button the time shows up it flashes when it stops flashing it's set and they'll start pumping. So when you do your, your interval, interval time, uh, I'm gonna eventually set this up for 12 hours. So from the time it starts, it will, the time you start the button on there, is, am I saying this right? I think so. The time you start the button, uh, when the pump starts, that's gonna start its interval time. And then it'll count down 12 hours later, it will do it again or whatever time you set for your inter interval. And the little uh, timer on here will count down and show you how much time it's got left pumping or how much time till the next interval. Okay, so here I am at the farthest plant from the pump, the last one on the system here. And you can see a little spot right here where it's wet. The water has, you know, kind of soaked into there. And the moisture in the dirt, yeah, that's pretty good. It feels nice and moist. Um, not overly wet, but it's able to form a nice little clump there. 
So what we're gonna do is, I did tie some of these down with landscape stakes. This is because of the quarter inch Rainbird tubing I got on here is kind of stiff. It looks like, feels like, and uh, behaves like a high quality uh, uh, tubing. So what we're gonna do now is, like I said, these are not hollow, these emitters. They got the little trails in them where the water will run down there and then drip out. And this puts it down there at the roots. Get a little bit of that dirt out of there. And we're gonna put this in here and we're gonna let it run and see how much water it gets for one of the 20 minute cycles that I've got it set up on. Get that to stay in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pump on and then we'll see what it does. Okay, so what did 20 minutes of watering get me with this setup? That's a, a pretty good bit of water. This is a uh, 500 millimeter. I got uh, 370 milliliters of water right here at this plant. And it's gonna be to all of the plants too. They are pretty equal. Um, I have pulled a bunch of them out and watched them drip and everything. And they all look like they're dripping at a pretty steady rate. And that's not terrible right there go ahead and pour this in there. Now I've had this thing running overnight. Um, it runs 24 hours a day pretty much. And well, that's the whole idea of it, to run 24 hours a day so you can do other things or so you don't forget things. But that's a pretty good bit of water. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in here. Now I've got it set on a 12 hour cycle. And what it'll do is it'll water for 20 minutes every 12 hours. And now I've got these right down there at the roots, which is where the plants need it. And underneath the uh, sawdust mulch I've got on here. So that'll help minimize evaporation from it. So it really should do a great job at keeping these things watered. Now I did look at the level in the barrel and I run this thing a bunch of times yesterday, just testing things, looking at things. And I've probably lost about, oh, maybe maybe a foot of water in there so far. Now I'm gonna be watering on um, less frequent intervals and uh, just for 20 minutes at a time. I may bump it up to 30 minutes every 12 hours. I may bump it up to 30 minutes once, once a day because once I get that moisture in there and established, this will just maintain it so the blueberries can get plenty of moisture. Uh, and I don't have to worry too much about getting you know a light rain and not really doing enough to get down there in the soil. When you get a nice little shower, say even a, a good shower, and you get an inch of rain in the rain gauge, that water does not penetrate the ground very far. Even if it was a full solid inch right there with no runoff, it's probably only gonna go about an inch in there, maybe. And the roots on blueberries are shallow, but they're a little deeper than an inch. So it takes several inches for that to actually get work down in there from completely dry soil and give you something that the plants can really use. Blueberries having shallow roots, like I said, they don't, they don't go searching deep for water. They spread out looking for water. Grapevines are another story. I read somewhere that uh, they found grapevines, the roots as deep as 30 feet. That sounds a little excessive to me, but um, I mean, if they can do it in search of moisture, they can do it. Blueberries just aren't gonna do that. That's a pretty good bit of water for a 20 minute watering. So I think it works pretty good. All right, so for me, the um, Luisia, I think it is, solar irrigation pump set up here for the, it says 30 plants, minimum of 40, and it comes with 50 drippers on it, but it's a success for me. I like it so far, I haven't had any issues with it. Of course, it's only been up for not even 24 hours running, but all the tests I've done with it, cycling it on and off and everything, it seems to do a great job. Pretty simple setup. Put your solar panel somewhere where it can get good direct sunlight. Mount your panel, drop your tube down in there. Now what I did on this tube was I have both the pickup tube and the level transmitter. You just heard it beep. That is saying that uh, it's low on water, so it will actually shut off so you don't dry run the pump. I did put a nut down there just to kind of weight the, um, the pickup tube so that it doesn't um, 
doesn't float up. Not that it's going to, it shouldn't anyways. And I just need to get something to keep anything from getting down inside there. But it works. Uh, kind of rolled up the excess wire on the edge of this board here. Run my tubing out there to all 40 blueberry bushes. I actually have 41 emitters on there because I've got an elderberry bush down there that's also needing some water too. But um, if you're going on vacation or something, great choice because you don't have to monitor it. You just got to make sure that you've got enough water in your barrel. And like I said, I've used about a foot of water in there. I'll take my other barrel, bring it up here and top this off. And then with a 20 minute cycle every 12 hours, this should last me, oh, I'm going to say maybe two weeks, maybe somewhere around there. I run way, I used a foot, but I run way more than you know, two or three uh, 20 minute cycles on here. I did a bunch of them at different lengths and stuff. And um, yeah, it works great. I will put a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up and check them out. I know I'm going to buy two more of them because I got 114 grapevines over there that need some regular water too. And uh, although they are able to put their roots deeper into the soil to search for that moisture, it sure would help a little bit if they had a little supplemental water in these long dry periods like we've had here recently. Anyways, thanks for watching Homestead Ohio. If you could reach up here and hit this button and check out some of my other videos and hit the little round button down there and subscribe if you could. I sure could use the help. Thanks for watching.